Welcome to the platform. My name is Sam Omashaye. This is uh, another weekend of a potpourri of political offerings uh, for Nigerians. Uh, we have seen so many things happen. We saw eventually the big fish of the Senate, Bukola Saraki, finally announcing his defection from the APC to the PDP and his assistant and also uh, one of his political votaries, uh, Bolaji Abdullah, the, the uh, public relations uh, person of the, of the APC, also tendering his uh, letter of resignation. Also this week, Governor Aminu Tambua of Sokoto State also announced his defection to the PDP. He went along with about 18 uh, members of the House of Assembly. So we have seen this, um, what has been called a gale of um, movements from APC to PDP uh, going on this week. Uh, we also know that there was another gale, which is that of impeachment. Uh, we've seen that in Benue, we've seen in Kano, and we've seen in Imo State. So it has been a week of very significant political events. But before I go on, I want uh, my column, which will be read um, instantly, is titled, A Storm in a Teacup. As the day began, it looked like chaos. Men were scampering like rodents from one part of the Senate chambers to another. Outside, the Senate president was under police siege, a dunderhead of a move. The wave of defections had torpedoed APC majority. According to a report, the PDP had muscled enough numbers. Some said 67 PDP to something like 44 APC. With that calculus, the legislative air was bleeding with Buhari's impeachment. The social media was on the boil. Some who hated Buhari began to yell hallelujah. Some might even have squealed, crucify him. To others, it was not enough to edge out Buhari. They must make the sweep complete by flinging Oshibanjo into the mighty gale. That would make Saraki the default leader. Eleni would now become Kabiesi. Remember it happened once in the TV drama when the megalomania with invisible hands held forty when the king was away. Suddenly, the scales began to fall. Reality jolted the apocalyptic optimists. So, APC still had its majority. It was all a counting error. The calculator had suffered the virus. One plus one was no longer two. Apologies to Russian writer Dostoevsky who in his novel The Mount from the Underground warned that science could destroy civilization. Not only were the defectors not enough to tilt the balance, the coup plotters had suffered defections of their own. So it was not the pandemonium that was first reported. It was no chaos. It was just a tremor, a rollicking farce. There were two kinds of defectors. One was of the mind, the other was on his feet. Some were both. So, the defectors of the feet routed to the PDP. Even some of them routed back, including Lanre Tejuosho, who grinned with remorse to Buari in his unique mold of the prodigal son. This son did not err for too long before retracing his steps. He defected on his feet, not in his mind. The other was Sheu Sani, who had defected in his mind but decided to return also in his mind. His feet remained transfixed in APC. Wamako, Alero et al. retreated in both mind and feet. It shows that to jump boat is not an easy adventure. When it happened in the House of Commons in Britain with MPs rotting and rerouting, Winston Churchill equipped, anyone can rot, but it takes a certain amount of ingenuity to reroute. But the real truth is that the routing and re had begun about three years ago at the outset 
of the Eighth National Assembly. Like the couples who cheated and pretended they didn't know about it in Harold Pinter's play, The Betrayal, the traitors to the APC family had moved over to the other side long ago. They had defected in spirits in their minds. Everyone saw the crack on the mountain, so no one should be surprised at the leaks and eruption of the volcanoes. Although, as poet Coleridge wrote, anticipation is more potent than surprise. When Bukola Elenyimi Saraki became Senate President and Lugara Speaker, they gave the President and other party mainstays a black eye. They made mincemeat of Buhari's quotes about being for everybody and for nobody. These lawmakers were for themselves. The President was not able to heal the moment. The crisis developed hooves and hands like the character in Salman Rushdie's The Satanic Verses. Saraki and Dogara, as well as their headsmen, had become in spirit and in mind the opposition. They were not even loyal opposition. They hunkered down, the President and his men did same. The relations between the two arms were thrust aside into a stalemate, and sometimes reptilian standoffs descending even into the catawalling infamy over whether a customed man should or should not wear uniforms. That the splinter festered is first and firmest the fault of the president. He failed to bring the party together. The APC began as a hodgepodge of calculating egos, held together only by the prospect of electoral victory. Having won, the spoils came, but they were unevenly shared. Even then, the players became too spoiled to eat in harmony. It was the president's job to cajole and reconcile. He hid in his high ramparts and allowed the contending forces to wrestle in the mud. If Buhari could not hold the party together, it was because he had never been anointed with such skill. The same way he has not been able to hold the country together with charges of inequity in distribution of offices and a lopsided vision of ethnical existence. He could not build one tent for APC in the same way he could not erect one canopy for Nigeria. He could not bow when he should, smile when he should, backslap when it was necessary. If the House Republicans wanted Obama to fail, the first black president did not help his cause by his temperamental inflexibility. As Toy Story wrote in War and Peace, it is better to bow too low than not to bow low enough. But the defections tell us too that the lawmakers are carpet baggers, not subservient to virtue, but mammon and the exigency of political relevance. Curiously, no one accused any defector or remainer of ideological apostasy or diluting of a party program. It was all about bread and butter. There was not even a pretension to virtue or the people's wish. It was an intra-class war in which the pedestrians could only watch and wonder in impotence. Last week was a spectacle in the failure of the Nigerian state. Rather than pretend, this is our autumn of politics when leaves change to the color they have hid all year. With the weather adversarial, the leaves and flowers cannot hide their drab colors. They become what they are. The hypocrisy of lawmakers are now shared. No longer what Senegalese writer Osmanis and Bene called the perfidy of words and hypocrisy of rivals. The other issue as to whether Elaimi Saraki or Dodlin Dogara should remain on their perches as Senate President or Speaker is in most points. It is a convention in sane democracies that when your party has a majority, the Senate President or Speaker is chosen automatically by the majority party. Our constitution makers took that for granted, hence they asked the members to elect their leaders. They also exaggerated the sense of one of our lawmakers, which was naive of them. They did not study our historical penchant to subvert laws and protocols. They prorogued the assembly as a rogue move to rule for more defectors. We shall see if it is a plot of war. If men like Saraki and Dogara had defected from their party in spirit earlier on, they are also parting ways with the spirit of the law by remaining as legislative leaders. 
they are aglow with opportunistic spirits. The law protects them, but honor does not. They are immune to such honor. With prehensile dexterity, both will remain leaders and show no shame that they belong to a minority party. Taraki will become like Eleimi village headmaster, who huffed and puffed while the real authority lay with Balogun, his field of kryptonite. We shall see whether he will swagger emptily or be ill at ease. I predict the former. In the larger calculus, the defections for Buari is a storm in a teacup. If it reflects the coalition of United Political Party's attempt to preserve Buari's fortunes in 2019, they have to do more work. The defectors, apart from Rabi Okwankosu, were featherweights. A governor called them nonentities. As far as geopolitics goes, they have not even ruffled any of Buhari's strongholds. If this is what opposition is made of, they need more imagination. If they want to beat Buhari, they must tweak with Mark and own it. Buhari is an open target, but Cop does not seem to know where to pull the trigger as yet. Welcome to News Mention. My guest here is Eric D.K. Otutu, a public affairs analyst, and we're going to be looking at some of these events. One of the first events we're going to look at is the defection of Bukola Saraki, with his members in the um, House of um, uh, Assembly, and also his governor in the state, and also his um, publicity secretary, who's, uh, who also resigned from the um, APC. Uh, we have seen this happen, uh, seen this predicted over time that this was going to happen, that Bukola was going to leave uh, from the APC to PDP. What does, what does it now mean for not only the legislature, the national legislature? What does it also mean for the coalition of forces? in both political parties. Politics is being played not for the general interest of the people, but for personal interests. So I am more concerned with what this holds for the nation, Nigeria. Now, before you go further, there was this point made by Saraki when he decided to defect. He talked about the fact that at the beginning it was 200 juicy offices and uh, they were all going to Katsina, Katsina, and Lagos, Lagos, quoting him. And uh, it was not about him, it's about Nigeria. Is that not, does that not tell you that this is not really about the welfare of the people, and that this defection thing has nothing to do with whether a man on the street can get good education, or the road on the, on the, on the, on the corner cannot have potholes, or that they can have uh, electricity? Prostitution will always remain a vice, not a virtue. What we have today in Nigeria is nothing but political prostitution. And the prostitute does not mind whom she goes home with. All she wants again is what comes out of that relationship. relationship. The trouble with today in Nigeria is that the people who are there, I must tell you, ought not to be there. What those who are governing us now are doing is sacrificing good politics at the altar of personal interest, selfish purpose. Every nation gets what it deserves. Over the years, Nigerians have behaved like that old man who saw a child being beaten by another. And because that child is not his own, 
will look the other way and say it doesn't matter. This is proverbial. Until we begin to understand that Nigeria as a project belongs to all of us. And now the prosperity and peace of this nation depends on our common uh, you know, agenda. Okay, then the trouble will continue. Now what has happened now is that with Saraki defecting from APC to PDP, it still makes PDP the minority party, right? People like Oshomole, the party chairman of uh, APC, has now said that Saraki should resign as Senate president. Is it going to happen? And if it doesn't happen, what will happen? If you go back into our political history, you find that Saraki will not resign because he has some powers behind him. A formidable financial backing from those who have cornered the wealth of this country. I don't want to miss words. I'm being honest, I'm being straight. I want to hit the nail of the head. When you have people who have cornered the financial ability of this country, governors, what they say is final. Well, let's go to the next uh, issue, this impeachment uh, saga that is going on. Uh, we saw what happened in uh, Benue. Uh, some lawmakers came together, they impeached uh, the speaker, and then the speaker muzzled about uh, seven other people, and they wanted to impeach the governor. What is going on here? In Kano, they've impeached the speaker. In um, Imo State, they impeached the deputy governor, but the court says you can't swear in him, which means that it has raised a huge question about the process. So why this mania of impeachment? What does it tell us of what is going on in, in the party? All of this is happening in the ruling party, APC. People have used the word nascent, democracy. You begin to wonder, for how long will a democracy run yeah, before, 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 our children. before and, uh, it, 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 it matures? It's still nascent. It's nascent 20 years ago. Like they say about Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigeria uh, uh, is a country with a lot of potential. They told, they told me that when I was uh, in primary school. I've, li I've, lived, I've gone through primary, secondary, university. Nigeria is still a country of great potential. That's the, that's, 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 that's in, the problem. In, in that sense, Nigeria as a nation is a contraption. Reason being that uh, it is a crippled entity. It's a crippled entity. Now, the, what is going on in uh, Benue is, is, is quite, is okay. quite palace. We saw that Otom was an APC man. An APC, APC before, before Autumn's defection, came to him and begged him and cajoled him and said, oh, they loved him and so on. And then suddenly he moved to APC, to PDP, and it was, it was suddenly good riddance, and then EFCC comes after him. What is that? I don't see any sanity in our political milieu. I don't see that at all. Now, if you use America, for, for instance, you find out when it comes to issues that concern the people, okay, these are two main parties, Democrats and Republicans again, they act as one. But when it comes to election, they can now go for individual votes. What we have today in the country is a fallout from our past, a past based on ethnicity, tribalism, okay, divisiveness, Religious. Religious, uh, whatever it is. So yeah, we, 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 and, and, and all that, we have, we have a problem. Well, we've had um, Eric uh, Dike Otutu has been uh, a guest analyzing the situation from uh, uh, the big picture point of view. Thank you very much for being well, thank on you, this sir. show. Thank you, sir. Thank you.
Now it's the big talk. Uh, I guess this week is the Kuku Peter side, the Director General of Nimasa, and also a top shot of River State politics on the APC. It talks Nimasa, but for the most part, it talks about 2019 River State. Also responding to an interview I had with his political rival in his own state and his own party, uh, Mr. Magnus Abbey. <music> well, let's start with the master, but it's going to be essentially a political interview. There was this thing that you have started in the master, which I found very intriguing, which I think that um, the country should borrow relief from. This is, this is, your, this is your campaign on uh, plastics. How did it start and how far have you gone with this? Well, thank you very much. The International Maritime Organization recently is focusing on marine litter, especially plastics. Plastics constitute serious hazard, not just to navigation, to aquatic life. Mm. And it's indeed multidimensional. Why did I say it's multidimensional? Aside from the fact that it affects aquatic life, fish on the river take some of these plastics and take dangerous chemicals in and eventually uh, men or human beings consume this fish and it is injurious to the health. So from a perspective we're dealing with navigation issues, safety issues, we are dealing with the pollution of aquatic life, we are talking about the endangering of species, we're also talking about danger or threat to human life. So it's multidimensional. And so as the maritime administration of the country, um, we are working collaboratively with agen other agencies of government to see how we can get rid of marine litter or minimize it. In some countries of the world, they've literally banned the use of plastics. And, and even in Africa, in Kenya, they've banned principally the use of plastics. In some other jurisdictions, they've banned the use of plastics for packaging and for other uh, purposes. Every country of the world right now, they're making efforts to reduce uh, the, uh, the occurrence or incidence of not just marine litter, but plastics on the sea, our oceans. So we're focusing on it from our own perspective in Nimasa. The question is, are you not an island in a country that seems uh, essentially agnostic to the importance of this? Uh, I remember that I saw on Sky News a very graphic picture of a uh, a whale was taken out of the water because it had been killed by plastic and they tore it open and it was a found sea. a lot of plastic. Ah, it's terrible. It's it's just a mirror image of the danger next time, especially in our environment where we just toss plastics everywhere and they not only litter the 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 drainage and cause um, all kinds of um, flooding. flooding and I'm sure what happened in Casina not long ago was also part of the, part of the problem. So how, how does it not be just in a NASA campaign, but a national campaign? Yeah, well, you can't blame the Nigerian people who do not know the dangers of marine plastics. Mm -hmm. That is why we are intervening. And our fight against marine plastics is multi-pronged. One, we are carrying out a campaign to raise awareness about the dangers of plastic in our marine environment. Mm -hmm. We are also carrying a massive campaign you know, on the need to get rid of these plastics in our marine environments, including in our environment generally. And we are actually embarking on the removal of these uh, marine leaders. So we can't blame the Nigerian people if they are not aware a good percentage of people, if you ask me, conservative 90 percent of people are not aware of the dangers of marine plastics. Until we raise awareness, people will not appreciate it. People will not key into the campaign. It's not a global campaign. It may not have gathered momentum in Nigeria, but again, there must be a spark plug. Nimasa has offered to be that spark plug that will lead to the elimination of marine litter, or at least addressing the issue of plastics as source of marine litter on the oceans and our maritime environment. And it's yielding results. Yeah, but as a federal government, your agency is in the federal government, but the federal government, other than the, the Massa and Go, 
has not really projected this as a theme of the environment. Well, the theme for this year's um, Day of the Environment, or this year's uh, environment, World Environment Day, centered around uh, marine litter and marine plastics in particular. So the world is drawing attention to the issue of marine, marine plastics or plas the occurrence of yes. uh, plastics in, yes. in the marine environment. And I'm sure that the Federal Ministry of Environment has keyed into that. And Nimasa is also uh, championing that oh. campaign. So as a government, Nimasa is government. Nimasa is part of government. Nimasa is part of government. Yeah. The Federal Ministry of Environment is also part of government. The Federal Ministry has not really projected I think they have well. budget issues. It's, it's, it's top in their priority, but I think it's budget issues. Re uh, recall that the budget of the country was just recently passed, and so they've not impacted on full-scale campaign. Nimasa appears to be leading the campaign on marine litter, as, as in many other things. We are literally... But, but Nimasa also needs the budget, too. Oh, yeah, well, but Nimasa has um, a bit more flexibility. Because you, because you have your own money. No, no, why? Our money passes through appropriation. Yes, I know, but you see Passes your through money. TSA. Yes. It passes through appropriation, it passes through tracing. Yeah. So same thing, same process. Okay, the same process. You have we provide for it, it in our last year's budget. Okay. I think that the Ministry of Environment provided for it in this year's budget. So you are the driver, essentially. Let's go. Now, politics. What is the state of the Dakuku Pizza Side campaign for governor? Well, I don't think it's about the Dakuku Pizza campaign for governor. As we speak, the Dakuku Pizza campaign for governor has not been activated. Dakuku Pizza has not formally declared that he will run for governor of River State. He has said con consistently that he's consulting with his God, with the people of River State, with his family, with his political associates, and that he will make his position known at the appropriate time, whether he will offer himself for service, specifically in the capacity of governor of River State, or he will not, and that he will make it public very soon. So I don't think we need to be the gun. We don't need to be the hurry. So why is Magnus Abbey angry with Rotimi Amechi, which is the who is the leader of the APC in River State, that he has that he is rigging the process? in favor of Takuku Pizasa. I think Senator Magnus must have been quoted out of context. There is no way he will say that a right on a which we call it is manipulating the process in favor of a particular candidate because we have not even started the process. People are free to go about their aspiration. And he is free to go about his aspiration. He what says it's not free because... He's free to go about his aspiration. He has set up a campaign organization. He has set up um, the, his campaign machinery. And every other person is in It is his right. And nobody can hold it against him. It is his right. Now, what he cannot guarantee is the support of every member of the party. Because it is a society that is plural in terms of choices. People have right to choose among many options. Every other person has right to also uh, uh, make known their aspiration offer themselves for service. The more, the merrier. When they do, the party will institute a process. That process will throw up one single candidate. And like every other good sportsman, when that candidate emerges, we expect everybody to rally that candidate so that we'll go ahead and win the general elections and end the era of hopelessness in River State. That's my expectation of Senator Magnus Ngei Abe. I don't think anybody uh, I don't think he's angry with the right to number two because he's manipulating the process. He's angry. He came to this show to say it. And said he's angry that he's manipulating sure the governorship process? Yeah, he said he's guiding the process of nominating people for The government. process has not started. Yeah, no. I mean, he was talking about the preliminary process. In the what party. preliminary process? Yeah, that like you guys held a meeting and it was to be a meeting where you guys were supposed to decide on who was to run or who was not to run. No such meeting took place. And... And he was, he was, he was not even allowed. His people were not even allowed him. That they, that's why I went to court. No, I'm sure that you're mixing up the fact that he was referring to the congresses. Yes, the congresses. That's yes. The, the congresses. Yes. That during the congresses, mm. a few persons who paid no, for the nomination form to yes. contest for elective offices in the party, yes, they claimed they were denied access to the nomination form. They approached the court. The party, in its wisdom, sat back to review the process 
I said, okay, we cancel those congresses where these persons were either excluded or they were not given forms. Mm -hmm. And asked us to repeat the congresses again. Mm -hmm. We went back and repeated the congresses and it produced a new set of officers. Mm -hmm. World officers, local government officers, state officers, and delegates to national convention. But you know, but you know that this, this, uh, this is how the nomination of whoever is going to become governor begins. No, no, it doesn't necessarily follow. Unless you're going to do... It doesn't necessarily follow. Unless you're going to do... A general... Or or state. State. <laughs> Where it doesn't going necessarily to follow. Delegates. No, but even at that, uh, even for the delegates, uh, experience has shown that the fact that you produce party officers do not necessarily mean that they will vote for you when it comes to government programs. In Nigeria, it has worked that way. Because, no way. Because, no way. Because, because no way. Works that way. I can, I can cite a few cases. Mm -hmm. In Anambra, mm -hmm. my very good friend, Tony Woye yes. was not part of the process of nominating party officers. Mm -hmm. Another of my very good friends, George Mogadu, was part of the process. Senator Andy Obama was not part of the process. They all went for the governorship primaries. Mm -hmm. That man, who was part of the process of nominating officers, because he was the only one in the party at the time with Senator Gige, mm -hmm. uh, whereas Andy Obama, Senator Andy Oba and Honorable Tony Woye were not members of the party at the time. On uh, Abutoni Woye came first, Senator Andrew Bar came second. Yeah, but you, but what you, are those but, ones who are but part you know, But you know, but you know, you know how politics works in this country. I can get you people to get it. I can get the people who, 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 who win the, uh, the, uh, the offices and so on. And some people can come and, uh, and overthrow you, even uh, delegates. And so? Yes, the issue is not possible. about who produce the party officers. But you have to be really powerful to beat the person who produces the officers. No, it's not about who produces the but party officers. Are, uh, but you agree with me that most people who produce the officers get their candidates. Well, In it's, it's, it's a 50-50. It's not 50-50. It's a 50-50. I've -50. just cited the case of Anambra, uh, which nobody has disputed. Mm, you know, Anambra, 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 Anambra was fluid. And basically, it was, now, there's a it was case. open. There's another case. The federal government was not even interested in... Uh, in ah, how do you know federal government is not interested? They're not interested in actually overthrowing the party of the state. Not quite. That's now, look at the case of Akwaibom mm. in 2015. Mm. Senator Udo Dehe was, Udo part, Dehe, yeah. Udo Dehe was part of the those who constituted the party hierarchy or leadership, rather, from the world mm. to the local government and, of course, mm. to the state level. Omana, Omana, came who eventually Mehmet candidate, was not part side. of those who constituted yes, it. He two, came from PDP, two, 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 he uh, got to the party, and he was nominated as candidate. But do do he didn't have the resources to maintain the people he put there. They are bringing a new dimension now. <laughs> that resources. Is, that is, you are bringing that is, a new dimension now. Resources. very important in Nigerian politics. <laughs> Well, Very important everywhere in the world, not just Nigerian politics. Not, so you agree in America, <laughs> anybody who has capacity to raise more funds mm. has a likelihood of running too. a better campaign mm. and eventually winning. Mm. It's capital so, intensive everywhere in the world. Yes, it is, it is, I agree. So what is happening therefore is that Magnus is he came on this show to say that by that very process of the Congresses, um, the party had not been transparent. And interestingly, I asked him, I said, so what is your relationship with the Kuku Peter? I said, he said, fine. Do you people speak? He said, you people have been talking. So we don't have issues. You, people, you guys don't have issues. It's very strange in Nigerian policy that you don't have issues. No. I was discussing with somebody this morning. I said, this is very strange. Both of you are the ones who are gunned or gunning. <laughs> For the position, there are others who want to. Uh, no, 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 no. There are the two. This is a ones. perception now. This is not a perception. Perception that I and my brother, Senator Magnus Abe, <laughs> are the arrowheads or those the front line candidates front or line aspirants running for the. Can no, you name the other person? There is, of course, Chief Dumo Lulu Briggs. Uh, and I can know. mention several others. You can mention many. I mean, in the last uh, uh, PDP primaries in uh, Oshun, uh, as well as APC, there were so many of them. We knew the two front runners and the two front runners well, too. And we know it's, it's, it is. We've not initiated the process. It's yet to start. Well, on the surface, but we know that it is uh, it is working. So, will you tell me now that you are interested in the office of the governor again? I've, I've, of the I've, governor, I've, I've made my position Britain. clear. Yes. That politics is a team game. Politics is played in context of teams. What it simply means. That first, our constitution did not provide for independent candidates. 
aside from the fact that our constitution did not provide for independent candidates, even in places where it provides for independent candidates, you're going to run with a team. You can't be everywhere all the time. You're not the only one who will propagate your vision. You're not the only one who is going to sell your, your, your whatever you want to do in society, whatever you, think you want to do in government. You need to sit down with a, a set of people, and we all agree that we're going to change this part of society. We're not satisfied with what's going to happen, or this is what we want to improve on society. Mm -hmm. There must always be a motivating factor for you to put yourself forward for service. Every human being is political in nature. Every human being wants to serve. But you know, when you look at it in the context of a team, the team sits down, look at the context, the environmental context, all the scenarios, and say you're the best food for us to put forward. So I've made it. I've made it known that I work in the context of a team until my team sits down and say, you are the man for the job right now. We share a common vision. We're all motivated by one thing. We want to change the river state and make it a model state in the country. We want to make it a peaceful state, a united state, a prosperous state, a state where everyone has limitless opportunities. We're endowed with natural resources. We've got smart human beings, but somehow we've been held back by leadership, and it's got worse in the last three years, where we've got a leadership that has no clue about what to do to transform society, a leadership that is self-serving, a leadership that all it's interested is in politicization of the development process. Now, that's why you can hear that we have built one roundabout, we've built a second roundabout, and all you hear, but they forget that development is about human beings. Development is not about building of roundabout. And I call that, that brick and mortar um, economy. So if in the past three years, nobody has talked about development in River State. Okay. When it gets to the issue of, uh, of uh, Wiki, you know, it looks like in the campaign mode. I'm not in campaign mode. This is a reality. This is a reality that everybody yeah. in River State mm. appreciates. Mm. Now that you're talking about building a team, I asked um, Magnus Abe, I said, how did it come that you became the flag bearer the last time around? And it was giving me a narrative. And I want you to confirm whether this was what happened in your own perspective. He said, the then governor, Rotimi Jibuka Amechi, had said that both of you, you and Abe, were singled out for that position, but that decision had not been made. And then sometimes we'll call you again, and then you say, no, the decision had not been made. And then after a while, I said, it was going to be you. And both of you had agreed, very interestingly, that whoever it was, they would. And he, he said, he's, uh, is he volunteered his own person as your campaign? Manager and that. that person is no longer in talking terms with him. <laughs> it's interestingly and so on. And I said, how did it come from that atmosphere with Rotimi and Michi to this time where even he was not even willing to say that Rotimi and Michi is his leader? Well, um, Senator Magnus Abe has consistently said that. The right of the Republic of which is leader of the party, and that's not in this. Yeah, it was not very clear in this. I say he's a leader. No, well, he's always a leader, but he's not acting like a leader. Ah, uh, good. Leader. If he says he's a leader, he's not, he has, he's not in dispute about who is leader of the party mm -hmm. in River State. Now, uh, going back to the narrative about how we, how we produce our candidates in the last election, mm -hmm. it is true that originally, ab initio, um, Everybody thought, two of us, I and Sine, and my brother Sine, Tomagos and I were the only candidates mm. of the party, or those who were interested in the office of governor. Mm. And so we had a number of consultative meetings on our own privately and with the then governor. Yes, on your own privately, with we yourself did. and... And himself, Sine, Tomagos and I, and we agreed mm. that in this process, what's important 
is the interest of the people of River State and the mm. party, and that both of us best represent the aspiration and hope of the people of River State. And that whichever way the pen pendulum swings, uh, the other person will support and will go and win mm. the battle. But in course of it, so many other persons indicated interest. The then Speaker of the House of Assembly indicated interest. Mm. The then Deputy Governor indicated interest. The then Commissioner for Health indicated interest. And um, who again, a few persons indicated interest to run for the office of the governor. And so we all agreed on the process that we we're going to get leaders of the party and elders of the state sit down and try to narrow down to a few candidates. And it was narrowed down to three persons, not two. Uh, Senator Magnus Abe, uh, Tele Ikru, the then deputy governor, and myself. And they followed the process, you know, and said, well, they felt that I was the best foot to put forward then, as, as, as it were then. Um, there were many considerations. It's not like uh, anybody was put on a scale of you came first, you came second, you came third. No, no such scale. There are other, so many considerations. And um, what used to be called conclave then, um, they all agreed that I should fly the flag of the party. So that's, that's the process that's we followed. That, 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 and we built a consensus. And the other part of the question, how did it move from that kind of atmosphere of harmony to this time? Is no, well, it, see, is the Magnus Abe is, is in the best position to explain himself out. Um, I've had different versions, sometimes conflicting. But you guys speak. We, we speak. You know, sometimes conflicting, sometime, uh, sometimes consensus too about what the true picture is. But what I know is that uh, it got to a point where there was disagreement and he decided to chart his own path. And it's his right. He's free to do that. Okay, now, well, what would you say? Would you say that the party is really united in, in the light of what happened? Um, with Abe, do you think the party is really the, united? The party is united. Time? The party has not always been about Senator Abe and myself. Or the party has not always been about the aspirations of Senator Abe that could be decided as it relates with the right of the There are other members of the party. The party is bigger than all three of us. Now, if Senator Magnus Abe has differences with the right of the Mechi, it's not the same thing as saying that the party is not united. The party is united behind the right of the Mechi. The party is united behind the state chairman of the party, uh, Honorable Flag Ujukaye Amakri. There may be fundamental issues. There may be some differences, which I believe is not so big that it cannot be handled. And I think that there's a process, there's an ongoing process to try to unite everybody behind um, the leader so that we'll go to the fight with a single voice, a united front, and defeat the, uh, the monster government that is in the university. I saw your comment in the newspaper. Um, in which you said that uh, the process uh, that every crisis in the party is, is, a, is part of evolution. I said so. You said so. At the national level, especially. National level, especially. Uh, now, in rivers, there have been uh, some people in the light of what happened in Ekiti elections uh, that that they are taught before that what was going to happen was that you were going to use federal might to flush out any resistance uh, for the APC flag bearer in 2019, which tended to um, chime in with what uh, Governor Nelson Wiki said, that the APC government at the center was uh, planning to rig their way into the election. So in the light of what happened in the kitty, people were saying, well, the federal government has devised the new method. You don't have to do, uh, you don't have to go with arms, you don't have to go with uh, guns, you don't have to get out. All you need to do is outspend the other. <laughs> What's going to happen in the reverse? <laughs> well, reverse, different environment, people with different orientation, um, different culture. What works in a kitty may not necessarily work in rivers. That's not to say that money was the deciding factor in a kitty. Nobody can say that. There's no empirical proof to show 
that money was the deciding factor in the kitty. But let's even assume, without conceding, let's make an assumption that money was the deciding factor in the kitty, without conceding. We are not there, we don't have the facts, we don't have the evidence. If you play money politics in reverse, the reverse man, by nature, is proud and contented. He may be poor, but he's proud, he's contented, he's forthright, he can lick you to the face and say the truth. You take your money and vote against you. And vote you. against you. And so money will not be the only factor in reverse. I'm not saying money is not important in the political process or in the electoral process. Mm -hmm. Money is important, mm -hmm. but can't be the deciding factor. If money is all that matters, then we can all go look for the money to spend on voters. But money will not be the deciding factor. I think that reverse people are tired and they are true with the Yes Wiki led government. What if there's anything reverse people desire now, they want to go in a new direction, they want to bring to an end this hopelessness. They yeah. want a government that will restore hope and confidence. Mm. Government that will matter, will, that will care about their interest. Mm. Now, Yes Wiki has been doing a lot of um, Commissioning, commission. I'm sure. Not <laughs> commissioning. <laughs> commissioning. But he says there is projects. And he says that uh, you guys don't want him to take his shine. That he has worked. Even the, you, your party man, the vice president, has called him Mr. Project. And you are trying to deny him of his day in the sun. You see, just like lies have expiry date, deceit has expiry date. Governor Yashin has not embarked on a single project. One single project. I'm not challenging to a debate. Every single project that he has spent billions to commission was initiated. Yeah. What do you mean by billions to commission? He has spent <laughs> billions on publicity. And I have evidence. I can provide it. Billions on publicity. Even for projects that cost less than bi one billion, he spends billions to publicize it. And I'm sure that almost half of the budget of the state is spent on propaganda and politics. I feel for the people of River State. Now, virtually every project he embarked on was initiated, started, and advanced to 90% completion by the right and which you to mean and which is the administration, the previous administration. Not one that he can point. They feel he could point are renovations he did of old projects. Mm -hmm. That's all. He can't point to one single project and say, I initiated this project. Now there's been a question. Are you against him completing projects started by his predecessor? The that, answer that's is no. my next question, yeah. That's, the answer is no. But please give credit to your predecessor. My predecessor started this project, got it to 90% completion, and I'm but in the spirit it. of continue, government being a continuum, I've completed it. And then the people will give him credit and say, you're a good man. But if he said that and he said that, he will say that uh, probably people will not even give him that credit. We will have given him that credit. That, oh, if he thank you for completing publicly, my project. If he has come out publicly to mm. say, I admit, my predecessor did this project got to the stage of 90%, I have completed it. Mm. And the reverse people would have been happier with him. Even though there's another dimension to it. I was that dimension. The resources that have accrued to the state mm. and either the innovation or completion of projects do not align. There's a big gulf. And so what's happening to our resources? The people are investing their asset. Pensioners are being owed. Civil servants are being owed. Members of ROSS, those who work in oh, ROSSDA, yeah. civil servants are being owed. Are being owed. Those who work their in ROSSDA, salaries. salaries, those who are in ROSSDA, the University of Southern the way has not been paid okay. for close to a year. Those who work in Greater Port Harcourt, the Memorial Authority, has not been paid close to a year. Those who work in international school of the University of Tibet has not been paid for up to a year. What's going on? Pensioners are being owed. Civil servants are not allowed to do their work. What's going on? The rivers who have never known this level of poverty before. The streets of Potakot are stinking. Now, even the few renovation jobs he has done or completion of jobs are all centered around the city of Potakot. 
Portacot constitutes one of 23 local governments. Portacot may be his own home LG of Obiapo. What's going on in the other 21 LGs? Are they not part of River State? Do they not contribute to the economy of the state and the resources of the state? How can it be so unfair to a people? You claim voted for you. Is it fair? Well, it's, uh, it's a very interesting uh, scenario that is be beginning. So it, it, it looks like, will speak. But it looks like uh, the Kupisa like, Kup side is talking like the man who wants to take him on in the next election. Not quite. I'm speaking for several voiceless reverse people that don't have this opportunity. Hmm. I'm, believe me, I'm speaking for at least 95% of the population of reverse state. I think so. Well, it, look, it looks like you guys have the majority now in the in the Senate. You have two of the three slots in, in Senate. And uh, some people are saying that, that means that APC is still very strong, in spite of the fact that you have a sitting governor in the other in the other party. Is it part of the leverage you are taking into the into the next round of elections? No, you know politics is dynamic. Mm. There will always be alignments and realignments. Um, the condition precedent in 2015 is not the same condition uh, that we have in 2019. The conditions that existed in 2015 are not the same conditions that it currently exist. So nobody can build on the basis of having majority of senators yes. or ma majority of members of uh, mm -hmm. House of Reps. What's happening in Ikiti mm -hmm. is a living example um, of what can happen in politics. Uh, the PDP controlled the State House of Assembly, and they had more members of the National Assembly, they had more senators. But of course, APC went ahead to have a clean state victory, a clean victory in that election. So yeah. that's the dynamic nature of, of politics. politics. Now let me uh, conclude with going back to Nimasa. You, you last year were, was um, uh, praised by the President, yourself, and the and Federal, State Council. Federal State Council, and the and the Jam chief, who has now also announced that he was uh, returning some 8.7 billion or so. Mm, from less than 30 million. Yes, from, uh, yes, from uh, 30. What is the situation now with the books? Are you returning that much to from Nimasa? We are still returning substantial money to the Consolidated Revenue Fund. Mm -hmm. But you see, Nimasa was not set up principally as a revenue generating agency. We are principally a maritime administration or a safety uh, administration for so the country. you're accidentally becoming... Not quite, fruitful. not quite. And so when you measure our sources, you measure our sources by our reduction of number of accidents on, on, the uh, on our waterways, yeah. by, by reduction of the occurrence of substandard vessels within our maritime domain, our exclusive economic zone, mm -hmm. by you measure our sources by the fact that we've been able to reduce the negative impact of shipping on the environment and by the virtue of the fact that we have more Nigerians on board vessels. You know, Nigerians benefit from shipping. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the parameters to measure our sources. And in all, I'm sure that we've been rated above 90% in all. You said so, but you also complain that Nigerians have not been, we don't own ships. Nigerians don't own ships that do international voyage. voyage. Not that we don't own ships. Yes, we own ships voyage. that are involved in cabotage trade. Mm -hmm. But ships that do international voyage, we don't have any. And in any case, we are not the only ones. Most African countries don't have ships that do international voyage. But it's been addressed by uh, the attempt to refloat the national fleet. OK, uh, I think uh, we'll bring this to an end at this stage. Uh, you have always been very articulate in uh, putting on your position on River State, and uh, in, your, in your short brief so far in uh, Nemasa, you've uh, been on top of your game. Thank All right, thank you very much for uh, being thank on you. this show. <laughs> and thank you, viewers. <laughs> thank you. Uh, this has been uh, Dakuku Peter's side, uh, a top-line uh, politician in River if I put it that way, and also the Director General of Nemasa. Thank you for being with us on this program. 
You can join me on uh, my column and uh, www.thenationonlineng.net where you can see my column in touch. You can also go to my website, www.samomashe.com and also to my Twitter handle at Sam Omashe. So until next week, be good.